Hi everyone, I'm Alexandra, and I'm going to tell you today about building simple and fast single server private information retrieval. And this is joint work with Matt, Henry, and Vinod from MIT, and with Sarah from Google. So just as a very quick refresher, in private information retrieval, our goal is to let a user make private reads from a remote database. So in this setting, we'll have a server which holds a database, which we'll just model as an n-bit string, and then we have a user come along that holds some index i between one and n. And now, if our user interacts with the server following a PIR protocol, then we're gonna have two properties hold. The first is that our user is going to learn the ith bit of the database, and the second is that our server is going to learn nothing, really in a strong cryptographic sense, about the index i that our user is reading. So the good news is that modern PIR has surprisingly low communication, and specifically communication that scales only polylogarithmically with the database size n. However, there's still a big bottleneck in practice, which is that PIR is slow and expensive when it comes to the server-side computation. And in fact, there's a lower bound that shows that our server needs to do work that's at least linear in the database size. And the intuition here is that if our server didn't touch any one location of the database when answering a PIR query, then our server would learn that the user probably isn't reading that location, and so this would leak something about the client's query. And so really, our server is going to do essentially a linear scan over the entire database on each query. And in this work, our goal is going to be to make this linear scan be as concretely efficient and as fast as possible. Okay, and so the metric that I'm going to use throughout this talk to denote the speed of a PIR scheme is going to be the server throughput. And you can really think of this as the ratio between the PIR database size and the server time to answer a, quer a query to that database. So this is in gigabytes per core second. And this talk is going to be about our two new single server PIR schemes, simple PIR and double PIR, that let the server process a database at a throughput of roughly 10 gigabytes per core second. And this is roughly an order of magnitude faster than prior work. And I wanna mention two quick things here. The first is Frodo PIR, which is independent concurrent work that's based on a similar idea. And the second is that I'm only showing you one metric here, right? I'm only showing you server throughput. And in fact, these large throughput gains are going to come at some communication overheads. However, I'm gonna argue that these are manageable for some applications. Great, so what are we gonna do in this talk? Well, first I'm gonna introduce a new tool, which is fast linearly homomorphic encryption with preprocessing, and then we're gonna use this tool to build our PIR schemes. So to build simple PIR, which achieves the highest throughput, and then double PIR, which reduces the communication somewhat, and then finally we're gonna evaluate these schemes. And as a motivating starting point, I wanna introduce you to a classic single server PIR scheme, which is due to Kushilevitz and Ostrovsky in 1997. And in the scheme, the high level idea is going to be that we'll have our server represent its n-bit database as a matrix that has dimensions root n by root n. And now say we have some client come along that wants to read the entry at position ij of this matrix. Well, what our client can do is it can build the dimension root n vector that consists of all zeros with a single one at position j and encrypt this vector and send it up to the server. And now our server can compute the matrix vector product between its database matrix and the client's query vector and send this answer uh, back to the client. And what we see here is that if our underlying encryption scheme is linearly homomorphic, which just means that adding two ciphertexts gives us a ciphertext that encrypts the sum of the underlying plaintexts, then what this multiplication here is doing is it's exactly selecting out the jth column of the database. And so our user can decrypt and recover this entire jth column and recover exactly the entry that it wanted. So this is great, but an important question is how fast can we actually do this? So how fast can we multiply an encrypted vector by a plaintext matrix? And in this work, we give a new tool for the job. And our starting point here is going to be regev encryption. So just uh, to give you a quick overview, the reg of encryption of any message mu that consists of some number of small, so say one byte entries, is going to have two components. The first is this large A matrix here, which is really just 
a random matrix, which we can reuse for many, many encryptions. And the second is this much smaller B vector, which is actually the only message dependent portion here. And we see that indeed regev encryption is linearly homomorphic. So if we have some matrix D that we wish to apply to our encrypted message mu, then we can just compute D times A and then D times B, and this is in fact going to give us the encryption of the new message D times mu. And at this point, we make two observations. So the first is that we can actually pre-compute D times A once ahead of time because A is fixed and random, so it doesn't depend on the message. And because A has dimension more than 1,000, this is actually more than 99.9% .9 of the total work of applying D to mu. And then after this, for every message mu that we encrypted, the only per message work that we have left to do is to compute D times B. And because B only has dimension one, this is exactly one 32-bit multiplication in addition for every entry in D. So what did we just see? We see that if we can get away with some preprocessing, then actually multiplying an encrypted vector with a plain text matrix can be very cheap almost as cheap as doing the exact same computation without any encryption at all. And so now it turns out we can exactly compose these two building blocks that we saw. So the classic PIR scheme and the fast lin linearly homomorphic encryption with preprocessing. And what this gives us is a fast PIR scheme with a one-time preprocessing step. And so we call this simple PIR. And a high, on a high level, how it works is again, we're gonna have our server uh, represent its database as a matrix, and we're going to have some fixed A matrix, which you should just think of as a parameter of the scheme. So really, it's just hard-coded into the brains of the server and all of the users. And now, once ahead of time, our server is going to pre-compute the product of the database times the A matrix, and then whenever a client comes along and knows that in the future it's going to want to make some PIR queries, it can just go ahead and download D times A from the server. And really, you can think of D times A here as a hint about the database contents. And now say later on, our client finally decides which entry it wants to read, and then our client can just send up the second message dependent portion of the reg of encryption, so just the B vector here. The server can compute just D times B and send this back to the user. And because the dimensions here are much smaller, this can actually be pretty lightweight. And so really, the beauty here is that the hint is public, it's shared amongst all users, and after downloading it once, our users can make as many queries as they would like to the database, each at relatively low cost. Okay, so what did we just do? Well, we built a single server PIR scheme that's based on the learning with errors assumption, such that if we have an n byte database, then first of all, our client is going to download this one-time hint that has size roughly 4,000 times squared n bytes, and then after this, our client can make an unbounded number of queries, each requiring only eight times root n bytes. And for each query, our server performs exactly one 32-bit addition and one 32-bit multiplication for every byte of the database. And there are no hidden constants here, and that's why we can actually make this run at a throughput of up to 10 gigabytes per core second. And in the paper, we show that we can actually do better when the database records are short, so when they're at most one byte in size, and specifically, we can shrink the hint here to have constant dimension, 16 megabytes, regardless of the database size, with just a small decrease in the server's throughput. Great, so now let's start evaluating these schemes. So we open sourced our implementation of simple PIR and double PIR, and together it consists of roughly 1,600 lines of code using no external libraries. And then we ran some experiments, always on an AWS C5N Metal instance, using a one gigabyte database and a single thread of execution. So the first thing that we me measured is the speed of these PIR schemes. And we see that indeed, simple PIR is the fastest known single server PIR scheme at a throughput of roughly 10 gigabytes per core second. And in fact, it's within 20% of the memory bandwidth of our machine, which is the fastest that we could hope to make any PIR scheme run that does just a linear scan over the entire database. We also compared to the performance of the fastest known two server PIR schemes. So here I'm comparing to both a constant time and then a non-constant time implementation of XOR PIR. And again, we see that simple PIR has roughly the same throughput, so it's within 20% 
But crucially here, two server PIR relies on a trust assumption, whereas simple PIR and all the other single server schemes rely only on cryptographic hardness. And finally, as I mentioned, these throughput gains come at some cost, namely at some communication overheads. And so what I'm showing you here is both the communication and the computation for all of these single server PR schemes. So what we would like ideally is small communication and small computation. So that's the bottom left corner of this graph here. And also I should say that the communication here is amortized over 100 queries. So saying your client makes at least 100 queries to the same database. And really what we see here is that simple PR and double PR achieve a new point in the PIR design space. Great, so what are the open research questions? Well, first of all, I think it would be really cool to further reduce this communication cost. So to perhaps get rid of this hint download or to further reduce the size of the online queries. And second, I think it's a really exciting time to start thinking about deployments of these types of technologies to preserve our privacy. So in this paper, we showed how you can use double PIR to privately audit web page certificates without revealing your browsing history. And there's also a really cool demo by a startup called Bliss that uses double PIR to privately check if your password has been compromised. And finally, we have some new work coming out at SOSP in the fall that uses simple PIR to build private web search. So thank you so much for your attention and I'm really happy to take any questions.